What's up, everybody? Welcome back to IGN's E3 2014 live show. The conferences are done. It's time to play some games. And right now, we're going to look at Fable Legends. John, how the hell are you? Very good. You good have a strong you. handshake and a good demeanor. I like this young man. Thank you. Fable Legends, uh, we had known a little bit about it. There had been yes. the trailer, there had been an event. I had to listen to this lady called Keza tell me about it on yes, IGN.com. She's great. Well, now she doesn't work for us, so right. she sucks. We hate her. Um, <laughs> we love her. No. Stop. Okay. <laughs> what is Fable Legends? What are we going to be looking at? So Fable Legends is a multiplayer online quest adventure game. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what we're calling it. So it features four player co-op as heroes playing against a villain. It's okay. a real player that's real masterminding yeah, yeah. the game against the heroes. So, so I, yeah, I have more questions. You stop talking. Sure. You, you, you okay. can talk about this later. Right. You I'll have the four you. players going out. They're doing their quest-based things. And then yes. is it, I guess maybe you should talk again. Is it that... It, we're going in individual matches, or is it that they're in their own world and then different villains cycle in? So there's a narrative in the game. Oh, okay. uh, it's almost like a TV season. So mm -hmm. we have episodes that players play through, and they're typically about 30 minutes. Okay. And uh, you play through a storyline, and the villain is trying to thwart you. Okay. You play through it. And so then, when we join up with friends, you and yes. me are playing. We get yes. two of these schlubs over here, yep. and then we find somebody to be the villain. We can all be partied up as five players go in. You can all be partied on. up. You can actually play the game single player as well. Okay. So you could go out with three AI companions, and you could play against an AI villain if you want. Interesting. Or with a mate, two hmm. other AI companions. Hmm. Any combination. The game is going to be best played multiplayer, though. Of course. That's yeah. what we're designing for. So then. This is an interesting change from the fable we used to it know, is. right? It w is. Why the why the jump? Why change around? What's you know, you know we just, been uh, working? We felt it was time to modernize. Yeah, fable. Uh, we all love fable. We love the great you know parts of fable, the quirky British humor, the character, you yeah. know, uh, the people you meet in the game. So that's all going to be in fable sure. legends. Uh, but we wanted to do multiplayer. We wanted to do something modern uh, with it. So you can think about Fable Legends as taking classic Fable mm -hmm. and bolting on this new modern multiplayer mode. Was and now correct me if I'm wrong. Again, seeing this Kez lady, whoever she yes. is, and then watching the trailer, we're we're basically picking predetermined characters, right? We are. And then going out and doing that. Was that yep. a, was that a tough choice for you guys to make? Seeing how Fable's forever been about like making your own character, building them out, figuring yeah, well, out how they are. Yeah, well, there's tons of customization in the game. So, yeah. first of all, we're going to have a lot of heroes to choose from. Yeah. Uh, you'll be able to pick one that suits your play style the best, anywhere from a FPS-style character. That's a ranged character yeah. to a melee character to a magic-based character, if okay. you want to do that. Um, and then there'll be a ton of customization. You can do that character, so you'll be leveling them like you would in RPG. We'll have different armor sets and weapons. You can go to the hairdresser and Bright Lodge, <laughs> our, our central town hub, and you can get a new hairstyle if you want, get some makeup. Yeah. Um, so there's going to be a lot of fun things you can do with your character, a lot of depth there that you'll be able to explore over time. Interesting. So is, then there, so is there a hub world? That then I there would is. Say, it's oh, there it's called Bright Lodge. There you go. It's okay. gorgeous. Okay. You're going to see it in a minute in demo. Yeah, that's what I want. I want yeah. How many episodes are there going to be? Well, so, I'm, I'm ready for them to put, pick it up whenever they're ready, and then we'll so talk about it. It'll vary uh, per season. Uh, we're shooting for 15 to 16 episodes in the first season. All right, well, let's take a look at it. Let's see what's cool. happening here. So Wednesday. this is what we showed at the keynote yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I'll walk you through. This is uh, the first part of the mission. Uh, it's called Moon on a Stick. And what the heroes are trying to do is advance through this level uh, to collect a relic, the Moon on a Stick. Okay. So the character you see here is Sterling. He's a roguelike character. He does a lot of damage, but he can't take a punch at all. <laughs> Just like me. Yeah, exactly. So now, are all the other characters here being controlled by human beings? They are. Okay. They are. And these uh, creatures are called red caps. Okay. Uh, they actually dip their caps in pools of blood. Gross. That's right. Yes. But I guess it's intimidating, and that's what you'd want in this world. Yep. And to the left here, you're going to see another character, Winter, and she's a character of Will. Mm -hmm. So she's kind of a support character. She uh, freezes creatures uh, with her powers. Okay. And that hero that was right in the middle of that explosion there, that's Inga. She's your kind of traditional tank character. She's a character of strength. So she's in there to you know, draw aggro from the creatures and take a lot of damage for the heroes. So if Sterling's smart here, he'll stay behind Inga. I'm, I'm guessing in this demo he's going to be smart. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Um, so if I'm playing single player, can I switch between the characters on the fly, or is it that I'm playing through that one character? Once story? you're in the mission, you're, you're going to stick with that character. Makes but sense. But when you go to Bright Lodge, you yeah. can switch them out. Oh, interesting, interesting. And I assume that would work for multiplayer as well, right? Yep. That when we get back, we can be who we want to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, and the cool thing in Bright Lodge too is you'll see your friends in Bright Lodge, uh -huh. and uh, it'll be a real active uh, kind of city. Oh, so uh, will it be just everybody who's online will be there? It's part of the cloud features mm, we're building in where we flow real people in through your Bright Lodge. Yeah, I mean, Fable Multiplayer is something that had been talked about and dreamed about forever, yeah. right? And how and it it's would been work. done. Yeah. We're just taking it to the next level here. Right. And so what the objective here, they're moving closer to capturing yeah, it. Yeah, so they're moving through this level. And I'm hoping soon in this footage we'll show some of the uh, perspective from the villain. So the villain controls uh, the creatures in the game, where they're placed, who they're attacking. Uh, he also controls, you saw that gate that went up blocking yeah. the heroes. Uh, a lot of times a good strategy as a villain will be to separate the heroes and get the weak heroes like Sterling who can't take a punch in a room like this and have a bunch of red caps beat him up. Oh, okay. But essentially the game is a game of attrition. So the, the villain is losing creatures, but he's trying to do enough damage to the heroes that they can't make it to the end. Gotcha. And what I found interesting, right, is that the heroes, or I'm sorry, the villain's perspective is from above the world. It is. Right? It's isometric. It's very kind of art. CS style. Yeah. And so, how? what's the villain's currency for dropping traps and dropping people? So you have a set number of points okay. in the level, and you can invest those points however you wish. These smaller creatures cost less, mm -hmm. but if you want to drop a bunch of, uh, you know, a few ogres, uh, that's pretty much all you're going to be able to do. You're going to use up your points with the bigger creatures. Gotcha. And that's gotcha. how we try to balance it. Interesting. And then over time, if they do damage, do I earn more points back and stuff? Uh, you don't earn more points Okay, so back. it's just one point. It's just... Yeah, and the other thing is the villain Perma will... point. Exactly. Once they're gone, they're gone. Right. <gasps> Here we go. The other thing is the villain will uh, unlock new creatures oh, okay. as he plays through the game. So there'll be a variety of creatures that you can place in the levels. And does that, I guess, carry over episode to episode, or is it in one episode I'm unlocking new It things? carries over. Ah, yeah. there you go. So you got to get in right away. Exactly. Level so you up can, your villain. Right. <laughs> so you can see this is a very RTS uh, perspective. Yeah, yeah. And this is why this game is so ambitious for us. I mean, we're taking characters that play like traditional RPG melee characters, uh, characters that play like first-person shooter characters, and then we've got this strategic mode for villain, and we're m mashing them all together uh, in Fable Legends. I'm trying to wrap my head around everything. <laughs> so we have D-pad controls over here. What is, uh, over on the right side down here, this is the type so the, of monsters you can exactly. select with your so buttons. Exactly. So you can either use those to place the monsters in setup mode or uh -huh. to select them and then select the hero on the left that you want them to attack. Oh, no way. They can just go right to the hero. Exactly. Like that. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. Yep. How... How, un how uneven the battles have you seen in a playtest? You know what? Thing? Surprisingly, so we've done a, a ton of playtests yeah. in Redmond at headquarters with yeah. Microsoft people, and then just preparing for the show. It's pretty even 50-50. Really? Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so nice strategy as a villain would be to drop a smoke bomb like that, uh -huh. and then use one of your red caps, who's an artillery red cap, to bomb the heck out of the heroes. You can do a ton of damage that way. And it also looks like what he's putting archers up here on this ridge. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so there are different kinds of red caps. We have uh, ranged red caps, melee ones, uh -huh. and then the guy as a villain you're going to love the most is the artillery guy, and you want to hide this guy because he can bomb the heroes all over the level. He's great. Yeah, I can imagine. This seems like the type of game that people are going to lose hours and hours trying to master. <laughs> there's going to be so well, many game facts up about how this is how you get here, this is how you do this. Yeah, well, so there's a bunch of cool things about it. As a villain, uh, you'll be able to set up templates uh -huh. for how you want to lay out the oh, levels, wow. right? And you can okay. save those up into the cloud and then bring them down. We'll probably use those for AI villains as well. It's okay. kind of a smart um, uh, way to set up AI uh, templates. How crazy does training get? Like, I, yeah, I have to imagine you're, ho please, for the yes. love of God, hold my hand when I get this game <laughs> and walk me through everything because I, I don't want to get my teeth kicked in right away. I imagine it's quite quite the process to get you up to speed on that. You no, know, actually, great. so that's another surprising thing. I was a little worried about villain mode in particular, that it would take uh, quite a bit of training to get up to speed yeah. on how to do it. But it's very intuitive the way we use the D-pad and the buttons on the yeah. controller. You saw in there that you, know, you select the creatures with the buttons and you can direct them to the proper hero with the D-pad, right? Yeah. So most of the controls are that way. After a couple minutes, you really get it. You and see. then it's just all about refining your strategies and how you're going to beat the heroes down. That's the scary part 
hard is trying to figure out a strategy. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I gotta start trying to think about it already, just looking there, well, I put these guys here, but I have them down here trying to bottleneck them into this place. What's great about watching people play this game is the trash talking. Oh my God, really? It's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. So you'll see in our, our booth, uh, we've got a playable on the show floor that we've got the uh, villain overlooking the heroes so that we have a good line of communication <laughs> because there's a ton of banter, I'll call it, that will happen during the match. Yeah, yeah, banter. I like yes. how you, you turned it around from trash talk. Yes. So coming to a show like this at E3, you know, everybody's watching. Everybody's watching this Microsoft yep. conference. All eyes on you guys. You finally do this big reveal. Were you worried about reactions? Oh, this isn't the Fable, this isn't Fable, da 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 Or yeah. were you pretty confident in the product? No, well, we know we have a really fun game. Yeah. We know we have a beautiful game. We're using Unreal 4 mm -hmm. as our graphics engine, and uh, it's gonna be, I think, one of the more beautiful games on the platform when yeah. we get there. We're early days now, but ultimately, I think um, we're gonna be stunning. So, yeah, it is a little bit worrying uh, because of the multiplayer aspect. It's yeah. a little bit complicated to explain to people what it is. Yeah, this and isn't something you just wrap your ear. Yeah. Like, oh, you do this and before you're on the ground, there's a guy up here. Exactly. And the thing is, right now, you know, we're really focused on delivering that great multiplayer experience. Mm -hmm. So the fable aspects of the game, you know, showing the heavy narrative, we'll, we'll do that soon, but we're not doing that as sure, part of the sure. show, right? So those are the parts that I think your traditional fable fan is really going to be interested in. It's going to be in the game. We're going to get there. We need to nail this multiplayer. Uh, part first. That's fascinating, I imagine, yeah, because, yeah, you, you the part you know of Fable, yes. this story is there, but this is a completely new game mechanic, right? And this is kind of the cornerstone for everything you're doing, so yep. you have to get out there It's going to take it. a lot of balancing to make these heroes play together right and balance with the villain's capabilities. Yeah, and yeah. It's going to constantly evolve as we go forward. How so. long have you guys been working on it? Two years. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're going into a beta this fall, um, so that'll be really exciting. I imagine. And yeah. what are you targeting for release? We'll see. We'll yeah. see how the betas go. I, mean, I like it. I like I, that answer. I, seriously, I, I, we're going to release this game when it's great. Yeah, that's the point. That's of, my promise to Fable fans right, and you, people you are going to You heard play it here first, everybody. This when it's great, it. it'll go. Yeah. Um, so I guess then, how when you're sitting down to do this, are you looking? Are you replaying all the Fable games, trying to like figure out? Well, I want to take this and I want to take that and I want to do this and blah blah. So you know, it was really cool. Uh, Fable one. I wasn't a fan of when it came out on Xbox. Well, I'm I was, stepping away from you. I, don't I, know I was what's I was heavy into EverQuest at the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, I worked at, at Sony, and I kind of discarded it right away. So we did a remaster of um, Fable One, right. Fable Anniversary for 360, and I got to go back and play through it a bunch of times. And it really provided a great grounding for this game sure. and the fable parts of this game that we have to build. So, yeah, we have a ton of uh, talent in the studio. Mm -hmm. um, over 300 years of Fable experience still in the <laughs> studio. And it's been great because we've got these guys who have been in the studio really love and know the franchise for a long time. And we're bringing in new young talent that knows the online space yeah. really well. And that mix is just working out great for the game. It's a super fun game. Excited for people to come play it. OK, well, make sure you don't rush it. I like what you're saying, and yeah. I like that, too. Um, so I mean, yeah, you're talking about that there's still you know 300 years of Fable experience there yeah. and stuff. Um, were you prepared then? I mean, like again, were you, I, I want to. I want to know how much armor went on you personally and like, yeah. the team, right, to get ready to reveal. You already talked about it's not the same kind of game, right? Yep. And then of course Peter Molyneux, right? That he's this name that's been synonymous with yep. Fable. Great part of the history. Yeah, exactly, and that's the whole thing. And so, were you? How has fan reaction been to this? Like, we talked about what the worst case scenario could be. How, what have you seen from that? From the fans? Yeah. Yeah, I think they're still trying to figure out what this game is, right? I think yeah. there is a lot of expectation for Fable 4. Um, we looked at Fable 3. We thought it was, there was too much technology in it. Sure. You know, we, it was a little too steampunk. We wanted to go back in time, so the setting for Fable Legends is before Fable 1. Oh, okay. You know, a lot of magic in the world. Yeah. You know, it's a very dark, dangerous place. That's why heroes have to team up and go on these adventures together. And we think that fits the more fairy tale setting of Fable. Uh, than going the other way. So you know, you've got this setting that I think is different than our fans expect. And then you've got this multiplayer gameplay that I think it's just going to take them time to play it and understand it yeah. um, to really fall in love with it. We have. Right. And you know, it's interesting, a studio uh, that's filled with 300 years of, um, of Fable experience, right? You've got a lot of guys who they want to do the single player RPG and yeah. as well. So it was a big sales job within the studio. Uh, to get, get people on board for Legends, and we really have. It's, uh, it's great, and we're just super proud to be here at the show showing Well, I'm sure with that many years of experience and fans that you're going to do it right. Yeah. So thanks so much for coming no, by. Thank you for having great. me. It's great. It's been a pleasure, John. Thanks. Uh, Fable Legends will be out when it's ready, so just wait. Everybody, <laughs> everybody chill out. It's coming. Of course, though, it debuted, worldwide debut, at that Microsoft conference. We now have 
a little polished package of everything you might have missed there. And then we'll come back here for another game demo, this time Killer Instinct.